Hi folks, welcome to Formal Proofs. If you've read the chapters from the textbook, you should be able to figure this problem out. So pause your videos now and see if you can complete this formal proof. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. We're gonna start talking about it. Formal proofs are these graphical objects that we create. And one nice way to make sure everybody knows we're doing a formal proof is to set it off with these lines. So the, horizontal, the vertical line here means that we're in this formal proof space. And the horizontal line means everything above that is a premise and everything below that is some sort of conclusion that follows from the premises. There might be a bunch of intermediary conclusions as we go and then the last line will always be the final conclusion, the thing we're trying to prove. Furthermore, there's also a justification for every line of the proof. So for the premises, you can just write premise. Sometimes we forget to write this because it's pretty obvious if there's this line, but you technically don't even need these lines. So we can also do the formal proof just by numbering all of these rows and um, clearly signaling which lines are premises and how each line follows from it. So this counts as a perfectly adequate formal proof as well. But in these slides, uh, in order to make the formal proofs as clear as possible, I'll use the graphical device of the bars to set it off. Okay, so let's see how you completed this proof. What did you wanna do on line uh, do first? Well, on line two, the first thing I did is I inferred not not A. Because see, this is a wide scope conjunction. This is an and sentence. And from an and, we can bring down either part. You know, this is true only if A, not not A is true and B is true. So that means from that, I can clearly infer not not A. And once I have not not A alone over here, now I can uh, infer A from negation elim. So these justifications over here are setting the rule that I'm using. Like first I eliminated this and sentence to get that. Now I eliminated the negations to get A. And you, cite, uh, you need to write a semicolon with no spaces at all, and then the number of the lines that you're using to justify it. Okay, so after I got A alone, what did I do next? Well, look at this thing. I looked down at my conclusion and saw what I'm trying to prove. I'm trying to prove A or C or D, this whole thing, conjoined with B. So first I need to build up this part. I use disjunction intro, this rule, in, er in order to infer A or C or D. And the disjunct I'm using is A, so that's the basis of that, that line. Uh, the thing that I did next was I needed B in order to build my conclusion. I need the B part, so I brought that down with conjunction elim. Again, since I'm going back to line one, that's why I cited line one again here. Now, finally, I have this thing on line four and this on line five, so I can put them together with my conjunction intro rule. That is citing lines four and five where I'm getting those things. Now, the number one thing to know about formal proofs is there's no unique one way to do a formal proof. There's actually, there's always multiple ways of doing it. Generally, we want to do it in as few steps as possible. That's more elegant. But as long as you get the answer right, as long as every one of these rules checks out and you eventually get to the conclusion and justify it properly, then it counts as a good formal proof. There's also going to be many orders in which you could do some of the rules. Like, here's another perfectly good way of doing it. I could have brought down the not not A first, and then I brought down the B next. So I didn't have to do B where I had it in the previous one. Just pay attention. Whatever order you choose, you have to make sure to cite your lines correctly um, as you do so. <clears throat> so when I did conjunction intro here, and now I'm citing lines three and five because three is where my B is, the thing that I'm putting into this conjunction. Now, even though there's more than one good way to do it, that doesn't mean you can do it any possible way. So, but there are restrictions. For example, this does not work. What I cannot do is just lop off these two negation signs here. N nor, so this rule would not check out. This is an incorrect application of negation elim. This is also an incorrect application of disjunction intro. This is, this is a failed use of disjunction intro. So what has gone wrong in these two things? Why are these rules not checking out properly? Well, because this is what, this is the thing that you need to keep in mind. You can only apply these rules, the intro and elim rules in formal proofs to the main connectives. And the problem with these previous examples, you see, the main connective here is the conjunction. So I can only apply and elim to this because this is an and sentence. This is not a wide scope negation. This is not the main connective. Once, once I did something like this, once I brought down the, and, the, the not not a from and elim, now I have a, these negations are the main connective. So that's why I could apply negation elim to line two, but that's why I could not apply it here because this is not an and, a negation symbol. This is an and sentence. Similarly, I could not apply disjunction intro to this line because my disjunct is not uh, the main or the main sentence or the main connective over here. I need to have A alone in order to, it, to make this uh, A or C or D. 
So the disjunction here is going to be the main connective. Whenever I do disjunction intro, that disjunction is going to be the new main connective, and it's not. This is still the and main connective. So that's a misapplication of that rule. So what we're going to do is go through some of the examples in this uh, video about how to apply these rules correctly. So we're going to cover the basic rules. Now, the formal proofs, this is the last thing that we have not yet added to Boole. So once we add this in, you have the complete logical system of Boole. We've already learned the language and the semantics. Now we're just adding component number three, formal proofs. And now you've got a complete logical system. There's intro and elim rules for every one of our connectives. So there's going to be intro and elim for conjunction, disjunction, and negation. There's also one other random rule called reiteration. And that just allows you to repeat a previous line. It's kind of like circular reasoning. We know that we can, if we have something already, we can just say it again validly. That can't be an invalid move. And sometimes in formal proofs, it's actually going to be really useful to use reiteration. So we'll just, we'll include that rule as well. In this video, I'm going to talk about these easy rules. Disjunction, elim, and negation intro, those rules are, are more complicated. They're more difficult to learn. So each of them gets their own videos, but we can cover the basics um, all together here. In order to understand these four easy rules, you just have to think about how we reason in English. Like, if I have an and sentence, if I know P and Q is true, clearly that means P has to be true. That's just how the word and works. Like, let's say I know this. Uh, Pia saw parasite and Quinn saw parasite. Now, if, if I know that's true, then of course it follows that Pia saw parasite. That has to be the case if we know that they both saw parasite. This is, this is such an obviously valid way of reasoning. We do it all the time in our everyday lives. Reasoning from ands is really easy. Similarly, reasoning to an and is really easy. So if I know P and I also know Q, then clearly I know P and Q. I can just put them together with an and. Like Pia saw parasite, Quinn saw parasite, of course, then I know Pia and Quinn saw parasite. This is clearly valid. Uh, okay, how about or? This is a little less obvious, but if you think about it, this is just as valid. Let's say I know Pia saw parasite. Then it's got to follow that either Pia or Quinn saw parasite because Pia did. Now, this is a weirder one. We don't normally um, introduce disjunctions like this in everyday reasoning as much, but this is, this is still valid, and it's a way to get to a kind of disjunction sentence. Uh, so... Technically speaking, my conclusion here says less than my premise, and so it really does follow validly. Um, if I know one of the disjuncts, I can always infer anything in a big, bigger disjunction with it. Um, lastly, how do we reason from negations? Well, if we have a double negation, that allows us to reason away from it. So if I know it's not true that Pia didn't see Parasite, that means she had to see Parasite. She did see it. So two negations can get eliminated. This is a bit like our double negation rule, but that's, but th let me warn you, this is not exactly like our double negation rule. So these intro and elim rules and formal proofs are different than the chain of equivalences we've done previously. That's really important to understand. I'll talk in a later video about exactly how they're different. Let me just say that the four easy rules we're adding to formal proofs just follow exactly like these natural and easy ways to reason in our everyday lives. Like how does conjunction elim work? Well, if you know P and Q, you can just bring down one of the conjuncts and infer P. That has to follow if we know they're both true, then one of them has to be true. So conjunction elim uh, just m mimics this natural way of reasoning that, that you're already familiar with. Uh, same goes for the rest of these. Let me note the, the terminology elim and intro. Elim means you're eliminating it. Like, see, notice there's a conjunction here. I eliminate that to get one of its conjuncts. And these rules always have multiple applications. Like I'm allowed to bring down P, I'm also allowed to bring down Q. So that's, that's perfectly valid as well. Uh, okay, so how do we reason to a conjunction? Let's just say I have P on some line and Q on some line. Then I'm allowed to put them together with P and Q. And the intro terminology means, see, I'm introducing a conjunction symbol here. And that's gonna be the new main connective. Whenever I use conjunction intro, my sen new sentence is gonna be, the main connective conjunction that I just introduced. And what you do is you cite the previous lines. All right, how about the disjunction intro? If I already have some sentence, like P, I can make that one of a, dis a disjunct of some disjunction. Uh, and all I do is cite the line that I'm using. Just like conjunction, uh, there's multiple uses of this rule. So I can write P or Q, I could write Q or P, and I would cite it the exact same way. I just cite the disjunct, um, uh, th that I already know, like in this case, it's P. Finally, when I have two negation symbols, 
and they're wide scope out here like this, I can eliminate them and I just drop off two to get P. If you have four or six, you have to do these in successive operations. Um, so you first knock off two and then you knock off two more, um, just repeated applications of the rule. So these are the four easy rules. Um, and these are the only ones that we needed in that proof. So let's go back and look at the proof that we did previously to see how it illustrates um, these sorts of rules. Firstly, remember, it's all about the main connective. All those rules, you can't put, apply an ELIM rule unless it's the main connective. So that's why I had to do conjunction ELIM first to get this sentence alone, because this is a wide scope conjunction. So I can't stress this enough. When you're starting a formal proof, you always look at the main connective of your premise and the main connective of your conclusion, because those things is what, are what tell you how to complete the proof. Now that I bring down this uh, conjunct with conjunction elim, now I look, my new main connective is these negations. So I'm gonna just apply negation elim, and that's how I got this. Now, the next thing I did was I looked at my conclusion and I saw this is a wide scope conjunction. So I need to first get, in order to apply that rule, I need to first get this bit somewhere and then get this bit somewhere. That's how the conjunction intro rule works. Look back at the rule. I first have to have P and then I have to have Q on separate lines and that's how I build a conjunction. So in this case, I knew I needed to first construct this. That's what told me to do this on line four. Since, since I know A, I can just apply disjunction intro. Disjunction intro has many uses. So I can, I can add one disjunct, I can add three disjuncts at the same time, or two, whatever you want to do. And now once I got four on this line, I had to bring down B for my conjunction. So that was conjunction elim again. And finally, that allowed me to apply the conjunction intro rule. Okay, so that's your introduction to formal proofs and a quick review of some of the basic and straightforward rules. Now we'll start doing some more practice and some harder proofs with it. Thanks.